Psalm 47, verse 4, where the psalmist says, God chose our inheritance for us. I don't know how that makes you feel, but I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy for him to choose how I should spend my life. I wouldn't want him to turn it all over to me. He said, RT, what do you want to do? I would be so afraid I would blow it. I just want to say, Lord, what can I do to please you? God has chosen our inheritance for us. Uh, to put it this way, this should make it very simple to understand. God chose the lot, L-O-T, lot, for each tribe. This was done by casting lots. And the verdict was therefore out of their hands. So you've got 12 tribes. You've got Zebulun. You've got Asher. You've got Judah. You've got Benjamin, uh, Nephtali. 12 tribes. It wouldn't do for people from the tribe of Judah uh, to come up uh, to Joshua and say, look, Joshua, do you mind? We would love to live in the northern part. Is it okay? Sorry, Joshua would say, it's out of my hands too. They couldn't say, here's where we want to live. Joshua would cast lots, and you took it. And so Judah, down to the south end. Benjamin, south end. Uh, and so forth. The point is, God chose their inheritance. It says in Numbers chapter 26, 55, the land shall be divided by lot. According to the names of the tribe of their fathers, they shall inherit. Joshua 18, verse 6, you shall describe the land in seven divisions and bring the description here to me. I will cast lots for you before the Lord our God. So it was all out of their hands. So with each one of us, you see, God chose our inheritance. First of all, uh, he chose our time and place of birth. Acts 17, 26. The reason that you were born in South Africa, most of you were, uh, that was God's idea. I was born in Kentucky. Our son T.R. was born in Florida. Uh, it was out of our hands. We couldn't choose. We couldn't say, God, please let me be born here. We've, it was unthinkable. God chose the place, time of our birth. You might say, I wish I'd been living in the 18th century, not the 21st. But we're all here by God's design, out of our hands, out of our hands. Uh, he's even determined our gifting according to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. And so God has shaped us. The psalmist could say, Psalm 15, Psalm 16, verses 5 and 6, The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. Here's that word, my lot. The lines have fallen for me, fallen out of my hands. This is where, where, where it fell. And David could say, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Somebody might cynically say, well, yeah, I can understand David saying that. He's king. He would think that. I reply, each of us will feel the same way about our own inheritance if we are truly obedient to the Lord. For example, if a rival spirit emerges, let's say among the elders in 3CI, the reason I can use them as an example is because unless I've got no discernment, it seems to me that the beautiful thing about the eldership at 3CI is there's no rival spirit. I don't sense anybody saying, how come I can't be there? Why can't I do that? And that's so beautiful. And you may look at another person and say, I wish I could be them. Or why can't I be famous like Billy Graham? I suppose Billy Graham has made more ministers jealous than any single person in the history of the world. Uh, but that was his inheritance. 
But I would say to any minister, say it to myself, you seek first the kingdom of God, and watch what he does with you. You will come to terms with the way God made you, where you were born, who your parents were, what your gifting is, and you will be able to say, as David did, surely the boundary lines have fallen to me in pleasant places, and you won't need to look over your shoulder. Not that we ever are not tempted. I mean, it's kind of funny. Jesus told Peter how he was going to die. You see, at the end of the Gospel of John, chapter 21, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, you know, all your life you've done what you wanted to do, but uh, one day they're going to take you, stretch you out. It was the way he was going to die. The whole time Jesus was saying that to Peter, Peter kept thinking about John. He said, Lord, what, what about John? What about John? And Jesus said, shut up. It's none of your business. What is that to you? You follow me. And it's a lesson for all of us. When you're tempted to look at another person's inheritance, maybe the car they drive, the home in which they live, their anointing, their gifting, their personality, all those things. Just remember, God made you. He has chosen your inheritance for you. As we walk in the light, persisting in faith, it will become clearer and clearer what our lot is. We should all be able to sing, uh, sing with the hymn. Whatever my lot Thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. Knowing that God has chosen our inheritance. And so God doesn't lead us from A to Z, but from A to B. And if we are faithful in that which is least, we will be faithful in much Accept what God gives you. Come to terms with your anointing. Come to terms with your gifting. God never promotes us to the level of our incompetence. Where he has put you, you'll be able to function. Charles Spurgeon used to say, if God calls a man to preach, he'll give him a pair of lungs. Whatever God calls you to do, you will be able to do it. But if we don't persist in faith, but fall into unbelief, we will forfeit what God has in mind for us.